kinematics, how things move. We're going to look at velocity and acceleration. It has very nice applications to calculus. We know that the slope or gradient of curve is given by the derivative, how much the y changes and how much the x changes. And that the derivative represents that rate of change. So if we say, well, how much does distance or displacement change with respect to time, well, if someone says, kilometers per hour, that makes you think of speed or velocity. And so if those are related that way, then your velocity is just your change in displacement over change in time. And if you write it in this format, you realize, hey, if I just take the derivative of my displacement equation, I'm going to get an equation for my velocity. And if you take an instantaneous, if you want to find the velocity at a specific time, all you need to do is do the derivative and find it at that value. So what does this look like in an example? You good with all the spaces? Almost. So here we have some sort of object moving. Its displacement is given by this equation, t squared plus 3t. If we want to find the velocity, all we need to do is take the derivative. So your job is to know that there's a relationship between displacement, velocity, and later we'll look at acceleration. And they're just derivatives of each other. What does it mean when it says initial velocity? When t is 0. So these questions, they give you, again, sort of key words in here. Initial velocity means that time is 0. And if time is 0 and we plug that in to our new equation for velocity, we find out that this is starts by traveling at 3 meters per second. If we wanted to find it after 4 seconds, all we'd have to do is plug in 4 for t and find out it's traveling at 11 meters per second. So the kinematics questions that we look at, I would describe them as sort of straightforward calculus questions. They're not going to be a lot of complicated stuff because all we have is one equation. They're looking at, do you understand that velocity is the derivative of displacement? And if you do, then the actual taking of the derivative will be an easy question. Do you understand that initial velocity is when time is 0? If you do, then that becomes an easy question. So it's more concept-based rather than really complicated math questions. So I'll let you get a start on this one and see how you do. So to find the velocity, you're going to have to take the derivative. The derivative is going to be negative 9.8t. So after two seconds, plug in 2, and we get negative 19.6 meters per second. What does the negative mean in this situation? It's going down. We've got a direction here. Now, the neat thing that you'll see happen, and if you would look back at questions you did in grade 11, with, you know, a height of a cliff and something being thrown off of it or something launched in the air, they almost always have, in the parabola, a negative 4.9 t squared. Now, when you take the derivative of that, you notice that you get a negative 9.8. What does that negative 9.8, for those of you that do physics, make you remind, remind you of something? acceleration due to gravity. Later we're going to find that the derivative of a velocity is acceleration. And if we took the derivative one more time of that function, you would get a constant. And that constant will always be 
acceleration of gravity, which is pretty cool. So we always see these questions have negative 4.9 t squared in the parabola to start with. When will that stone hit the ground? Well, that's when we're putting our height at zero of our original function. So a lot of these questions are getting you to think about, do I need to use my original equation? Do I need to use my velocity equation? Here, we want to set our original equation to zero, isolate t, and solve for it. Now, when we square root both sides here, we get plus or minus 5. However, it doesn't make sense that five seconds ago it hit the ground. So only t equals positive 5 makes sense. And now we can find out how fast it was actually going when it did hit the ground because we know the time and we have our equation for velocity. So we can just plug in 5 and it's going at negative 49 meters per second. So you can imagine if you were standing on the ground and your friend was throwing you this rock, whether it would be a good idea to catch it or not. Probably not. And as we talked about already, if we do velocity with respect to time, that is acceleration. So our acceleration is the derivative of velocity. It would also be the second derivative of our displacement formula. So that's what we have here as far as the formula goes. That acceleration is the second derivative of displacement. So here's another question I'll get you to try. How did you do? Found your derivative, first derivative, plugged it in and got 4 meters per second. Did the derivative of your derivative, plugged in 1 and got 10 meters per second squared. The time at which the acceleration is 0, so we need to know, use our acceleration formula, set it equal to 0, and solve. and we get one sixth second. So we can imagine this object being on a planet other than Earth where the gravity is actually opposite. Everything gets thrown up in the air because this is a parabola going up. If you start at two meters above the ground and throw your object down and then one sixth of a second in, it slows down and it's stopped. That stoppage happens right at the vertex because it's changing directions. And then, boom, it's going to change and start going up in the air. Okay, another one for you to try. So what does it mean if the body is at rest? Does that mean displacement is zero, acceleration is zero, or velocity is zero? Velocity is zero. So again, it's more about interpreting the question and understanding what it means rather than the math. Once you say, oh, I need to find my velocity is zero, then I take my derivative to find my equation for velocity and solve for it. Once you get those times, you can find the value of s and the value of the acceleration. 